miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another Long Island Blues Warehouse at the world-renowned EKO Studios, Deer Park, New York. Always check them out at ekoproductions.com for further information on those boys. And uh, welcome back to another Blues Warehouse. Uh, Every week on this stage, we like to bring you Long Island's finest, New York City, Jersey, and Connecticut once in a while for good measure, mostly Long Island, New York City. No exception to the rule tonight. We have some outstanding artists and amazing ensemble of players on this stage. That having been said, please welcome this week's featured artist, Blues to Black Street.
This week's featured artist, Blues to Black Street. June Eisel. Hello. Welcome to the Blues Warehouse. Let me begin by saying. Welcome to you. How you doing, kiddo? I'm great today. It's so good to have you on the stage doing this with us today. You, uh, you've been singing around the island for not too long a period of time, my understanding is. Let's start with some history. Let's talk about when you began musically. How old were you? When did you decide this was a direction you were going to head into in life? Well, that's probably two different questions. <laughs> I've always loved music. Um, I guess uh, my whole entire family was musical, and so, um, and I had very many different uh, influences in my life. Uh, brothers and sisters that were older, and everybody was into their own thing, and I had my cousin over here playing rock and roll down at Gilded Sleeves and all that, so uh, I kind of like always loved it, and I was in uh, church a lot, singing gospel and all that since I was a little girl, and then well, you know, raised a few children, and uh, when I moved out to Long Island, I said, let me try, you know, doing this and that. I did some acoustic stuff and uh, some uh, singing with dance and model companies, and then uh, just in the past couple of years, I said, you know, all right, I'm ready. My kids are done. You, know? you and John, to your yeah, left, yeah. Uh, have been working together for a good number of years now, musically? About two or three years. How'd you guys cross paths and decide uh, this is... <laughs> Something you guys were going to do together. Uh, well. We'll start with you, and then we'll get his version That's later. all right. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Jim Moran's Jam. Jim Moran's Jam. Yeah. Maggie's West Babylon? Maggie's, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, Another yeah. great artist here on the island. Yeah. yeah, so I just walked up on stage, and he was up there, and I said, you know how to play this? Said, yeah. Talking to Jim or talking about talking to, to John? Him. Yeah, to him. Very cool. Very so, cool. Yeah, nice little history good. right out of the gate, <laughs> right from the get-go? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And after that jam, you decided this is something you wanted to try on your own together? No, it took about six months. I six months later. That. Yeah. You guys meet at another jam? How, what happened Well, then? I had like this sushi sing-along that he used to come to. A sushi <laughs> sing-along? Yeah, I had it for about three years, four years. And uh, it was a lot of fun. All kinds of people walked through there. You know, Steve Taranti, everybody. You know, Steve Taranti, like, yeah, that 70s people, band. Yeah, a lot of people ran, ran through that jam, and it was a lot of fun. But, and, you know, it was time to move on. So we started doing acoustic stuff. We're all over the island, and we're having a lot of fun. Some of the greatest players on the planet, as I'm sure you'll agree, right here in Long Island. Unbelievable. Steve Taranti being one of them. Yes. And the ensemble on the stage as well. I'm blessed. You, you and me both, kiddo. <laughs> you and me both. Let's grab John Vop for a second there on, on one of the lead guitars. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. John, let's talk about history with you before you even got involved in June musically. Mm -hmm. Were you a young guy when you started on the guitar? Yeah, I was a kid, yeah. I How old? A teenager. Okay. You know, studied a little bit with a lot of different people. What made you decide this is something you wanted to do? The music you were hearing in the house? Somebody in the house that was a musician? Just No, really, no musician. Just fell in love with it, started playing 
got hooked. In your teens? Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of different little bands on Long Island, rock and blues bands mostly, sometimes in the city. Nothing too, you know, big, but all the time out there playing. You self-taught? You, you took oh, no, lessons? No, I took some lessons from some interesting people, particularly Billy Bauer, famous jazz uh, guy, one of the, you know, real um, building blocks of jazz in the country. Played with Charlie Parker and Benny Goodwin, Goodman and Woody Herman. So once I found him later in life, uh, all the stuff I'd been doing um, didn't seem that important. And I, I, I got a little deeper into the theory and the jazz and stuff. So You learn, you know how to actually read charts, don't you? You know how to read music. A little bit. 90% <laughs> of the musicians on the island, as you know, and these guys know, mm -hmm. can't read a, a, a note. Well, I was that way for quite a while. And then when I st started studying with him, I had to kind of go back and learn what maybe some, some kids would learn on, on horns and piano. And he, he opened my head up a little bit. And uh, I think he uh, is a big influence on me, helped me quite a bit. Great influence to have, my man. Great yeah, influence to have. Great beginning for you. Great dynamic, you and June. You guys do this, uh, this duo acoustic thing, which I really love. Uh, on a side note, every Friday after my live radio show at WUSB uh, in Stony Brook, I head up to Stony Brook Hospital and work on the pediatric floor, Kids with Cancer. Every week, I bring musicians, as you two know, to come up and play for those kids. You guys have been up there twice already. Very well received. It's a very humbling experience, I know. Uh, it's humbling. It's, it's, it's our a blessing pleasure. For it's us, our pleasure. Really. For sure. But every time you guys do it, I get doctors and nurses in my ear saying, "You got to bring these two back," and, and you know, you guys are just so perfect for that. I, I, I look forward to bringing you back up there again. I know it's a tough thing to do, but um, it's well worth it. We thank you too for letting us do it. Too. Well, you guys, you know what? It's just it, it just makes sense to have you guys come up and do it, the true professionals that you are. Between the tone on June's voice, the ability for you guys to play the songs that you do, and engage the kids the way you do, phenomenal, phenomenal. Thank you. Thank We're changing direction here at EKO Studios tonight on the Blues Warehouse. Let's keep it moving. Let's get this band back to work. What are we doing next, June, Izell? Drown in my own tears. You good to go? I'm good. Well, once again, on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we are going to keep it moving with blues to Black Street. It brings a tear to my eye Every time you know that I I realize I cried so much since you
gonna be home soon You know I'm gonna Drown in my Oh, own and I'm in trouble, baby Yeah, hi, this is Ralph from EKO Studios, and you're listening to the Long Island Blues Warehouse.
Oh, yeah. This week's featured artist, Blues to Backstreet. Well done, June Izell. Well done, kiddo. Nicely done. I want to grab on guitar if he'll make his way up to the mic, Mr. Frank Annunziata. How you doing, Frank? I'm doing fine. How are you? Welcome to the show, my man. Let me oh, begin by pleasure, saying. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm very grateful to be here. Heard a lot of good things here. about you by your lovely cousin standing to your left. They're all not true. Some of them are. Okay. I'm sorry to say. I'm not sorry <laughs> to say. I'm happy to say. And it's great to have you in here. It's great to be here. I want to start with some history with you, if I can. Let's talk about when you began musically. How old were you when you first picked up a guitar and knew this was something you were going to do in life? Um, I remember watching Ed Sullivan and seeing Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. Yeah. And um, I saw him put that guitar on doing that, that thing. And I said... <laughs> How'd that thing go again? Well, it wasn't exactly that, because they never showed him from the hip down. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, not I at had that to time. try. I had to okay. try. <laughs> okay, so you're checking, out, you're checking out the show? And uh, I just loved it. I just was, that was it. I saw that. I said, that's what I want to do. So the next day, my mom and dad went out and bought me a plastic guitar. What age are you? I was probably about eight or nine. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then I started playing a, um, a plastic guitar, one of those boxes that they had, and you press buttons. Oh, one of those. Yeah. Okay. You know, it wasn't good enough for me, so, so I So that lasted for real. about 10 minutes? Yeah, and it broke it, you know. And then from there, uh, it was a bit more time until I actually got a real guitar. And uh, the first guitar that I had actually had action that you needed, like, you know, a vice to bring down to play the strings, but it didn't matter to me. Are you eight or nine at this point when you get your first real guitar? No, I was probably 12. Okay, okay. Probably 12. It was a big interim between that. You taking lessons? You, are, you, uh, are, you, are you passionate with it at age 12? Oh, I'm passionate about it. But uh, the local neighborhood guy that was given lessons only taught accordion. So I you see. had to take guitar lessons via accordion. Okay. But eventually I got to the guitar. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> yeah, better late than never. And then finally, when I got serious about it, I started playing in bands in high school, and I really enjoyed playing rock and roll, and you know, the Beatles were coming around, and the Stones, and all the British bands, and I loved the Four Seasons as well, and all that kind of music. I just did a Little Eva. The first time I heard Little Eva, oh, I was just like, locomotion, that baritone sax just got me. You know, I said, oh, this is what I, I got to get more into this. So I decided I wanted to study. So I started studying with Barry Galbraith and Van Moretti in Manhattan, who were two jazz greats. And I wanted to learn how to read and play um, melody and chords, which was their forte at the time. So I was hooked after that. So you learned all you learned how to read music. Yes. At, at 12, 13, 14. No, no, no. This was, wasn't until I actually... Got, a little bit later. Yeah, after high school, after I had done all the, the Hendrix and the Cream and learned all that stuff, I said, I really want to play that stuff those guys play at weddings. I was a weird kid. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? So I wanted to play like the standard tunes, like piano players could sit down and play a whole song all by themselves. They didn't need anybody around. I wanted to be able to do that on guitar. And I had seen some guitar players at those functions doing that. And I said, I want to do that. So what are you doing out of high school musically? Are you in a band? Are you traveling? Are you? Well, I was always in bands. I mean, there was a gazillion of them, you know, from the time I got into my first one to the next one, the next one, to the next one, to finally I was just doing it professionally and making money. So Playing around the city exclusively at this point? Yeah. Um, my, one of my most fortunate moments was we had like a little trio, and we were playing the riverboat in Manhattan which was at the bottom of the Empire State Building. And we would do cover tunes, and then the band that was playing there was this, like I used to call them society bands. They had horns and upright bass, and jazz. they played the jazz and all those standards. And I got to meet some really incredible musicians who I had absolutely no knowledge of who they were at the time. And that's how I got turned on to Barry Galbraith and oh, Van Moretti. Very nice. Yeah. Great beginning for you, my man. It was a great beginning. Great beginning. Let's fast forward a little bit because we're only a one-hour show. Uh, um, a couple other nice highlights for you. Um, you. You've produced. Yes. You've played and produced. You, you played with Richie Havens. Yes. Which I'm fascinated with. Yeah. Back in what, the early 70s? Well, no, in the early 70s when I first met him, then towards the end of the 70s, I finally got to play with him and through the 80s and 90s and then again in the 2000s. Very cool. Yeah, very, it was cool. very cool. How did you cross paths with him and get that opportunity? I was at a party in Brooklyn, and there he was. A party in Brooklyn. Yeah, being He's, at the right place at the right time, eh? He was. Uh, he was from Brooklyn, and so am I. Okay, so that little connection there. You've produced some interesting acts. You, you've produced ha Havens. You produced the Mamas and the Papas. Yes. Um, it was. It was a great experience. How did you get that opportunity? Um, they were looking to do a record, and I, w I, I was a staff producer at Record Plant Studios. 
and uh, their manager knew me, and he said, do you want to do it? And I said, sure. I brought it to the plant, and they said, sure, let's do it. You've been working with Viper Records in New York City for a period of time now as, what, an A&R guy? Yeah. I know everybody hates that, ter that term, but... Not you know, everybody. I used to, you know, I hate them. You hate it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All right. I'm not the A&R guy. Is there, a, is there another term for A&R? Well, there, a lot of those guys are producers and musicians themselves, such as moi. And um, they, you know, they play, and but they all can jump behind a console and produce and engineer and write songs and all that, you know. So it's not really outside of the ballpark to, you know, be able to spot some talent. A lot of people can do that, whether they're A and R or not. I mean, you know, it's not like a a specific A and R thing. But no, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah, um, yeah the fa you know, the, the stage presence, the sound, the age. I mean, all these things factored in to yeah. make for a good project worth working with, and I, I understand, and, and many other factors as well. Oh, yeah. You got your hands full when, with a project like that, I'm sure, with a job like that. But, oh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and nobody has a crystal ball that works. That's right, and that's what I always tell everybody, you know. The Beatles were turned down so many times before they got their opportunity. Exactly. And even George Martin wasn't completely sure of what the, he was doing with them, but history proved all of that wrong. <laughs> There's so much more I want to discuss with you, but we, we definitely want to keep okay. the music moving. Just so people know, the website, so people can follow you and see what you're all about. Where can they go? Actually, to follow me on Facebook at Frank Annunziata. Uh, I'm, I'm there. Well, if I'm not mistaken, there's also frankannunziata.com. Yes, there is, but I don't really use that website. That was put up a long time ago by somebody else. Okay. And it's, it is... It's a bit outdated, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's way out of date. All right, all right. But they can go there and see pictures of me. Okay. <laughs> Frank Annunziata, thank you so much. A great dynamic to this project. And cousins with Miss June Eisel, the lovely and talented. Right. And it's great having you in the room with us. June Eisel, yeah. what are we doing next? Uh, I see a nice dobro in uh, Mr. Yeah. Bob's hands there. Yeah. A little beat up old guitar, man. Shamika did this one. I don't know who That's originally did it. That's why I'm doing it, because you wanted me to do it. I'm excited about this, <laughs> and, and, and I'm glad we're, uh, we're putting that together tonight. So once again on the Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving with Blues to Black Street.
one day that guitar just broke down You know, the old man it broke down too This mean old life gonna get you No matter what you do But if you're ever down in Texas If you listen June Isel, John Vop, a Shabika tune. It's not a Shamika. Uh, Shamika didn't originally do it, but who cares? What a beautiful tune. It's always the Shamika song to me. Well done, guys. Well done. Beat up old guitar. Let's grab on the harp if he'll head up to uh, to Frank's mic. Bob Hooch Pellucci. How you doing, Bob? Good. How you doing? President of the Long Island Blues Society. I want to start by saying. Sounds good. important, right? It kind of does. Yeah. yeah. It's good to have you back, man. Thank you very much. We're going to touch on a couple of things with you, um, starting with the Long Island Blues Society. Mm. Um, next week, the IBC, by the way, Memphis, Tennessee. Once a year, big, the big International Blues Challenge. Um, you and your cohorts put together uh, a few months ago the uh, competition, the Viking and Islip, if I'm not mistaken. A mm -hmm. bunch of bands you guys uh, got in the room to um, not audition, compete is the word. And uh, Long Island's own Blue Ruin, heading down to represent Long Island yep. in, in about a week. Yep, it's a, it's a great time of the year. We love doing this. It's a great opportunity for all the bands on Long Island to participate and get everybody to hear them, to get exposure. And yeah, this year, uh, Scott Ross and Blue Ruin, they just came and they, they, saw, they saw they conquered. They were great. I've been trying to get those boys in that thing for years. Mm -hmm. And here comes Bill Mascara from BillFoolery.com who says... You guys should try that. And they're like, um, okay, why not? And they and they and, and they, they won for Long Island. So I'm excited for those boys. They're gonna make a great representation. Um, you've been run, you've been the president of the Blue Society here on Long Island for just a short period of time now. What's it been? About a year? Not even about uh, six months or so. Okay, it's only been about half a year now. And uh, you're working on some interesting things, I understand, for the future. Yeah. Anything you can share now? Yeah, uh, just before we get off the IBC, I also want to mention for the acoustic side. Oh, please. We, yeah, we got uh, a Dirty Old Men. Dirty that's, Old Men. That's, uh, uh, Bruce McDonald. Bruce McDonald. Yeah, excellent. It's a two-piece band, and uh, those guys were slamming. So There's two things they do down in Memphis, Tennessee, the end of January every year. They do the, the, the solo, uh, the duo acoustic, right. and then they have the electric bands. Right. And they're going to be representing, obviously, in, yeah. in the uh, in, in the acoustic. Right. And some some gr I'll tell you the the talent in our part of the world like no other. Oh, it's incredible! Like uh, no it's something in the water. Because some of the greatest some... musicians in the world come from Long Island in New York City. That's a fact, right. in my opinion. You know, I'm from Jersey, and I had to move to Long Island because just to stay with just with to the hang ranks. Out with the guys. This yeah. is where you belong. Yeah. This is where you belong. Yeah. Another thing that you did a few years ago in this in, in here with me, uh, uh, another fellow New Jerseyan, your brother, my brother Phil P P and Hooch, P. P. and Hooch. We had in here, and I'd That's love right. to do that again down the road. Speaking yeah. of great duo acoustics, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was actually very cool because uh, my brother and I we also went to uh, Memphis, and we actually made it to the finals. So it was a lot of fun playing with him. Uh, down there, because we don't get to play that often. It's so cool, too, because a thousand bands uh, uh, try out for this thing around the U.S. Yes. Less than 200 make it to Memphis, and there's three top winners, yeah, and you've been in the finals. Yeah, there's only seven in the finals. It's tremendous. Okay. Tremendous. Well done, my man. Well yeah. done. Uh, to check out uh, further details of you and your band, Hooch and the Bluesitians, they can always go to uh, my website, li blues.com just scroll down into webisodes to um hooch and the bluesitians and check out the full story on you and your band and sure. it's always great having you in here my man Thank you very look much. forward to doing some things with you in the future with, with the blues world yeah with the, so all the things that are coming we need up, to so. talk about that thank you very much bob palucci on the harp we thank you sir let's grab on the bass if he'll head up to someone's mic uh mr mike green real quick well, how you doing how you doing mike green 
I'm good. How are you? Welcome to the show. Let me begin by saying. Thank you. It's good to have you on the stage holding down the bottom end real well. Good to be here. Tremendous dynamic to this project, I must say. Thank you. Let's talk about some history real quick with you. Sure When thing. did you pick up a bass for the first time and decide this was a direction you were heading into in life? Well, I knew I wanted to play a bass long before I knew what it was. I had no idea what it looked like. But uh, one day, my uncle put a song on, and it went... And as soon as I heard that, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Those few notes grabbed you? Yeah. What age were you, roughly? First time I heard that, I was a preschooler, actually. And how old were you when you first picked one of those up? Well, after begging and begging my mother for about, I guess, two or three years, she finally relented. And at about age 10. Persistence paid off, huh? Oh, yeah. First bass, first amplifier. Now, were you passionate with it at that early age? or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Once you had it in your hands, this is something you wanted to hang on to. And you practiced and you just got mm -hmm. serious with it. Get me off the street. Very cool, man. Very cool. Um, you doing any projects outside of this project now? You, uh, you doing any other, you working with any other bands today? Any other music projects to speak of? Uh, yes, I am currently with uh, Graffiti Rose, and uh, is that a we, New York City band? No, that's that's the Long Island band. All everybody I'm working with right now is Long Island. Okay. Uh, there is also with uh, my buddy Joe over here. He and uh, Jim Moran got together and made the Roberts Moran Project. I and see. And they uh, put me in on that on bass, and also there is Grand Boulevard. And that's a four-man group who uh, pulled me in because of uh, not just bass, but vocal. It's a very tight vocal group. Look forward to hearing it, my man. What kind of music? It's uh, soul, R&B, that sort of thing. Anything that requires a lot of heavy vocal work. And all four of us are lead singers, and we all do harmonies. I look forward to hearing the project. We're going to have to talk more about that off air. You well, got it. Mike Green, great dynamic to this project, my man. Keep going strong. Thank you. Mike Green on the bass. We thank you so much. June Eisel, I think it's time to go back to work. Okay. Let's do another one. We'll come back and talk to a few other players on this stage. What are we doing next? Hmm, I think we're going to do Do I Move You. Every time I see you. <laughs> but that's another story. You good to go? That's because I push you. I'm not going to quit my day job, I promise. <laughs> Once again, on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we are going to keep it moving with Blues to Black Street. it pleases me Are you ready for a little action Does it give you satisfaction Are you here
said it pleases me to black street well done people as always i want to grab uh mr arno heck if i can if he'll head up to the closest mic there well without uh you got that wire wrapped on your leg there careful that's all just pull that in. happens all the time how you doing arno i'm doing okay welcome back doing, to the buddy? show my man it's good to have you back in here it's good to be back you uh i'll tell you what um you were in here six seven months ago i'd have to say Something that sounded like about that. right? Yeah, that's right. With Tony Barca and the Cyclone Rangers. There you go. You were a gun for hire that day. I was, With yes. the Uptown Horns. That's right. Very near and dear to your heart, those fellas. Certainly are. 33 years. 33 years, yeah. The, 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 yeah you understand, we were only 10 when we started. I you thought know. you were eight. <laughs> but I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. Um, if you go to liblues.com and you click on Tony Bark on the Cyclone Rangers, you can get uh, the full story and, and history on, on Arno. But let's touch on uh, a few of the highlights for you real quick, if I can. Uh, a, a big thing, obviously, 33 years with the Uptown Horns. That's right. The Uptown Horns have done a lot of cool things, played around the world, done some uh, Joe Cocker. Joe Cocker, the Rolling Stones. James Brown, the Rolling Stones. Ray uh, Charles. Ray Charles. Very cool. Um, Solomon Burke? Solomon Burke, yes. Albert Collins? Albert Collins, yes. Just to name a few. That's right. Who, throw another one or two at me. I see Robert Plant. We were the Honey Drippers. You were in the Honey Drippers? We were the Honey Drippers, yes. I got to check out those old videos. I wasn't aware of that one. Uh, we weren't in the videos. You know, oh, you weren't? Nah, you know. Just, just the recording and, stuff and, and, and stuff, touring. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. An, a tremendous, tremendous... Uh, dynamic to any project you touch. And as I mentioned, if you go to liblues.com, click on uh, Tony Bark on the Cyclone Rangers in the webisodes link, they can get the full story on you, the history and all the background. But great, uh, great dynamic. Any project you touch, Arno, it's always good to have you. Thanks. Good to be here, Mark. Give uh, John Paris uh, my very best next time you see him in New York City. I most certainly will. Runs that great friends. jam at uh, at BB King's Smaller Room Lucille's every Monday night. Every Monday night. Do you go down yes. there and jam when you're available? Once in a while, yes. You stop in and... John and I go way back. I know you do. I know you do. It's great to have you. Great to have you back in here with us. Thanks for having us. God bless, my man. Keep going strong. Let's grab on the keys, Mr. Joe Roberts, for a second, if we can. How you doing, Joe Roberts? Doing great, Mark. How are you doing? Great to be here. It's good to have you in here, my man. It's good to have you in here. Let's talk about some history real quick. Let's talk about when you began with the keys. Were you a young guy? Oh, not on keys. I was a young guy when I started uh, taking up music. Goes back to a little band. I think they did something. She loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the influence for you. That was that was kick, kicked it off for sure. Are the keys the only instrument you've ever played, or did no, you play? no, no? I started out playing guitar. I played bass. I played saxophone. I played flute. Do you still play any of those instruments today? Uh, I still play a little bit of flute. Still play a little bit of guitar, but this uh, is the passion. This is it. Okay. This is it. Uh, really started for me. Jeez. Late 70s, I took up the keys basically because we were doing club dates and we couldn't find a keyboard player that was available to play keys. Okay. So I said, all right, I will do this. And uh, uh, so I did. Uh, I did a lot of writing, and so keyboard was important for that. When I discovered MIDI, I said, my God, they will never play the Joe Roberts First Symphony at the New York Philharmonic, but give me a rack full of synth mods and I'm good to go. 
It's all, it's all bells and whistles to me. <laughs> but I can appreciate where you're coming from. Yeah. What are you doing musically outside of this project? What else you got going musically uh, these Other days? than this, we got a couple of things going on. Uh, Rob LaMonica, myself, and Mike Green have a project called the Roberts Moran Project, right, cover band with Jimmy. Uh, Anastasia Renee on vocals, just killer vocalist. Uh, we're playing in a uh, jazz group called the Brown Shoe Jazz Ensemble, Rob and I. Uh, and we've got a little other thing called JJ Jazz Metaz, which is another jazz project with Jimmy. I look forward to checking these projects out. Do you guys ever go to, um, I, we mentioned John Paris's jam on Monday nights from, from 8 till midnight. From midnight till 4 in the morning on the same Monday night yeah. over at, uh, it used to be the cutting room. Bitter uh, End. The Bitter End, yeah. Richie Kanata's jam. Do you guys right. ever go to that? Uh, I've not been there. I, I kind of teach college by day. Okay. Know? And so you got to get to bed at a I relatively got, I decent get hour. To bed. That thing starts too late for me. I'm with you. I'm with but, you. But uh, I do the Thursday night with Jim uh, and Ed the Hat. Runconcoma? Uh No, that's that's the one in Bohemia at Watson's. Oh, okay, that's it. it. Used to be Pete's place. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I, d I do that with uh, Jim and uh, Ed the Hat, J.D. Leonard. Very, yeah, J.D. Leonard, sure. Yeah. Very nice. And Another uh, fellow I'm trying to get in here. I've, I've been known to pop into that Sunday night jam once in a while. Whenever, when, when, if, if your Monday morning is relatively... Yeah, Mondays are usually good morning. So okay. yeah, when, when I have a Monday class, I'll cut out early. But uh, Very nice. Yep. Joe Roberts on the keys, I thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. I want to grab on the drum kit real quick, if he'll pull that mic around in front of him, Mr. Rob LaMonica. Yeah, How are you doing, Rob? I'm doing great. Thanks for having us. You look relatively comfortable behind that kit, yeah, i got to tell no. you, man. Yeah, sitting I down, tell that's, you. That's, uh, that's my game. You, uh, you've right. been playing since uh, you were a little guy? I've been playing a long time. Out of the womb, basically? Uh, let's see, probably about 12 um, is when I started with this. Before that, they had me playing the guitar. Uh, you started with the guitar? Yeah, I started off as a guitar player, and my parents said, well, you have to take lessons. And they found a young little guitar teacher in the neighborhood, and he would make me wait to, for the lessons. And he, when he would walk in, I would be in the corner wailing away on the drums, and he'd like, with the guitar still in the case. you know. And he, just, he listened for a few times, and he went to my mother and said, listen, I'll take your money as long as you want. He'll never be a guitar player. He's a drummer. Really? And that's when they gave in. And, uh, and, you, said, got, okay. and you got serious with it. Um, yeah, I got way too serious. <laughs> I ended up, um, they found me a, a drum teacher who was a classical percussionist. And I spent my first beginnings playing timpani and xylophone and snare drum and uh, that direction and i spent a good portion of my my youth doing that all city high school orchestra sure sure uh, performing arts high school that kind of business and uh until i got bit and uh somebody played some uh this guy miles davis for me you got the bug and i got uh i said there it all it all ended with that you got bit by the bug i did man i was a jazz musician ever since ever since god bless my man great beginning for you great great backstory interesting very interesting but rob lamonica on the drum kit i thank you so much great added dynamic to this project keep going strong june Izell. we got time for two more let's do another one then we'll do our goodbyes and then you you folks will play us out what are we doing next Got a Rolling Stones song, man. Ca called? I got the blues for you. Ar Arno, I think you might know that one, huh? I thought you might, uh, might be a little familiar with it. Well, let's do it. Once again on the Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving. This is Blues to Black Street. I see 
the fire of your warm desire. I got the blues, baby. This week's featured artist, Blues to Black Street. Well, let's do some goodbyes before you play us out. Uh, starting on the harmonica over here, we got to thank Bob Pellucci. Harp, thank you so much, Bob. Always good to have you with us. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you again in the very near future. On guitar, we got to thank Mr. Frank Annunziata. Thank you so much, Frank. Good having you in here. Look forward to seeing a lot more things you do in the future. Thank you again. Um, over on the, well, on the, back there on the drum kit, let's thank Mr. Rob LaMonica. Thank you again. Always good to have you. Uh, on the bass, Mr. Mike Green. Thank you again, Mike. Thank you. Great having you in here. Uh, on the other guitar next to June, we have Mr. John Vop. Thank you, John. Great having you in here. Uh, let me see who's next. Uh, on the keys, Mr. Uh, Joe Roberts. Thank you, Joe Roberts. A pleasure having you, my man. A pleasure having you. On the sax, Mr. Arno Heck. Thank you, Arno. Great having you in here. Can't wait to see more things you do in the future. Um, and last but certainly not least, the lovely and talented June Izell lead vocals. June, thank you so much, oh, my dear. My pleasure, absolutely. Thank it was you great so much having you in here. I can't wait to see more of this ensemble and the duo acoustic thing you do with Mr. John Vop. Love to see you, man. And back to Stony Brook Hospital to play uh, for Love my kids to be again. Yeah, too. Well, I thank you so much. Thank you. 
great addition to the live scene here in our part of the world, otherwise known as Long Island. So I thank you very much for what you do and what you're all about musically. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Have a great night. Uh, you're going to play us out before you do. Always remember to check out EKO Studios at ekoproductions.com. They are the official studio of the Long Island Blues Warehouse. For the Blues Warehouse, I'm Mark Klein at liblues.com. And always remember to check out my live Friday morning show at 90.1 FM here on Long Island. My live blue show every Friday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Outside of the Long Island range, always at WUSB.FM. And that's the story on that. So thank you very much. One more time, we, we say goodbye to this week's featured artist. Thank you, June. Thank you. One more time, blues to Black Street. <laughs> I got dust from a rattlesnake, a black spider bone.